Flight of Fury is the Steven Seagal mega blockbuster hit movie where he showed the world he's still around and somehow still making these god awful movies. That's amazing. It starts off with Seagal in a military prison where he's getting his yearly gout checkup. This won't hurt a bit. And he suddenly snaps and kills the doctor. Ah! The nurse can't help but swoon at the sight of Seagal murdering a defenseless old man. He then takes one guard out with a solid punch to the helmet, while the janitor takes the other guard out with a broom shot to the nuts. All of this makes perfect sense, but there's no time to explain because now he's judo chopping this guard right in the body armor and rolling under this truck believably. He pulls himself up with so much power that he pops straight through the top and Teen Wolf's it to freedom. <laughs> Suddenly, everyone realizes just how stupid all of that was and chase him down. But they're too late because somehow he's in the middle of town now. So he steals a car and the movie immediately forgets any of this ever happened and it's never mentioned again. This guy is chosen to test fly a new stealth bomber that can go completely invisible. <laughs> then he just fucking steals it. At least we know she works, right? Anyways, Seagal's been locked up for a while and has a real thirst for innocent blood, so he drives into oncoming traffic, hoping to get lucky and take out a family. But the slippery fucks keep swerving out of the way. So to help him focus, he parks like a dick in front of his convenience store to get some coffee. While he's in there, a group of guys realize the hundred dollars in the register split four ways is life-changing money, so they decide to rob the place. But since Seagal is so small and unnoticeable, they don't even see him standing on the other side of this stupid window wearing a jacket that I'm pretty sure used to be black. But it doesn't matter because after taking the first guy out with several dick shots, he does this highly advanced shuffle move before he falls on the ground and slides across the entire store like a greased up penguin and kills two of the other robbers <laughs> along with the cashier who just rubs Seagal the wrong way. The last guy challenges Seagal to a knife fight and luckily Seagal keeps a knife in his ass at all times. After Seagal does this for a while, the robber fights to hold back his laughter which gives Seagal just the opening he needs to give him a neck full of ass knife. At that exact moment, the police show up, and even though it looks bad, especially the whole cashier thing, he's able to smooth talk his way out of it. Okay, let's go. Never mind. He's a fucking idiot. Back at the station, all anyone can talk about is how awesome Seagal is. This guy's extraordinary. He's unlike anything I've ever seen. They decide that was so awesome, they're gonna let all the killings go. So that's it, he walks? This guy's actually been paying attention to this piece of shit movie. Well, we could book him for stealing a car. But making sense has no place in a Seagal movie. Lord have mercy. So that shit gets shot down like he's the dumb one. Come on, man, it's not about stealing a car. We're 20 minutes in and the movie decides it's padded its runtime enough. I, uh... I travel a lot. And this sh isn't going anywhere anyways. I grew up in a bad neighborhood. So an Air Force general just walks in and gives Seagal an assignment. One of our test pilots stole a plane. You get it back for us. Back at the base, the general explains the whole invisible plane nonsense to Seagal. Stealth was achieved by shrinking the geometric cross section of the plane. Who's clearly just pretending to have any idea what he's talking about. That's amazing. Damn it, that's regular stealth that you should already know about. I'm not say so. It doesn't matter, and we don't have time for this anyways. Hell yeah. They also send a team of army rangers. This is Ranger Team Baker One. Who all transfer to the Navy midair and are now SEALs. Navy SEALs are locked and loaded and ready to jump. 
then they think better of it and transfer back to the army mid-jump. This is Ranger Team Baker 1. During which half of them are killed. Albers, Fielding, and Patterson didn't make it. I saw the militia take them out. The surviving half tries the old sitting duck strategy and are immediately killed also. <laughs> Seagal flies to Afghanistan and, due to the extra weight, has to be refueled the entire flight. When he arrives, he asks where the strike team, who posthumously transferred back to the Navy, is. Where's my SEAL team? Before deciding, f it, he'll do it himself. After driving in circles for several hours, Seagal finally admits he has no idea where the f he is or where the f he's going. Check the map. His partner tries to show him how maps work, but Seagal's in no mood for that sh So he has him hide the vehicle while he waddles over and scopes out the area manually. When he gets back, Seagal briefs him on everything he's learned. Not a fucking thing. Normally, this is when Seagal would hit up a strip club and the plot would magically come to him, but they're in Afghanistan, so he's all out of ideas. Luckily, his partner's an idiot too and parked the most suspicious way possible, which raised some red flags. Seagal sends his body double in as a distraction so he can knock him down this soft hill. Then, Robert f***ing De Niro shows up from out of nowhere to give him a quick assist before disappearing into the shadows. Then the Afghani soldiers fall right into his trap as Seagal no sights this guy before sneaking up in front of this guy. He even lays down some sick suppressive fire while not even pretending like recoil exists. His partner is confused by all this stupidity and just stands there while this guy flies in from above <laughs> instead of just shooting him. But Seagal thrives on stupidity, so he magically appears and boots the stuntman in the head before stabbing his already lifeless body. Then, holy shit! De Niro's trapped, but he ain't going out like a bitch, so he plunges to his death like a fucking boss. While we're mourning that, they take Seagal's partner, who nobody gives a shit about, hostage. They take him to the head Afghani terrorist behind everything, who's apparently British. My name is Stone, and you are? You know what? Fuck it. Seagal comes across a village and does the two things he does best. Kill innocent people for no reason and break into women's homes. Still fine as hell, ain't you now? Turns out this woman, a third his age, that lives in Afghanistan is his girlfriend. God, I missed you. I missed you too. For reasons that can't possibly make any fucking sense. But whatever, because Seagal's dark passenger catches up with him when they find the dead body and begin searching for him. Hey! While there's an infinite number of places someone Seagal's size could hide in this tiny little home, he knows that eventually they just might find him, so he comes up with a brilliant and realistic distraction. Is this what you want? Hot girl on girl action. Seagal truly gets Afghanistan. Anyways, the British Afghani terrorist is going to pay this guy we all forgot about. Hey, Rick. To drop biological weapons with the invisible plane. The price was right. Now, Seagal's in a race against time to steal the plane back, so he waits until the next day and makes his move. They're joined by this nose-picking guy that nobody cares enough to even question. They pull up to an agricultural checkpoint that's now magically behind them, and after stabbing these freedom-hating commies to death, it's now in front of them again. So Seagal shows off his expert driving by throwing it into fourth gear from a dead stop and flies right through the heavily fortified roadblock. They get spotted by someone and the chase is on.
but Seagal mind f**ks them and is now the one doing the chasing. <laughs> then they do a mind f**k of their own and are now in a completely different vehicle chasing Seagal again. <laughs> After some award-winning acting for his stunt driving, the other guys are in such awe that they crash into a tree. But they can't risk a transforming car becoming fully sentient, so they make the right choice and blow it the f up. They make it to the terrorist base and do some crazy Mission Impossible sh to their high-level security system. Then they come up with a genius plan where Nose Picky distracts and kills everyone while Seagal sneaks in and flies away undetected. You got it, boss. So Seagal hides behind this tree while Nose Picky single handedly takes out roughly a hundred terrorists using hand to hand combat, <laughs> guns, <laughs> flash dance. <laughs> And random fucking explosions. He then realizes he's too good for this movie and does a kamikaze charge on a fucking dirt bike while blowing everyone away with a full automatic <laughs> before blowing himself and everyone within a 30 yard radius up. While that's happening, Seagal has a classic showdown where he uses a metal pole versus Rey Mysterio Jr., who's armed with a tripod. <laughs> yes, the entire fight is as stupid as it sounds. <laughs> Then it turns out the traitor also backstabs the terrorists. <laughs> and isn't gonna bomb anyone, so this entire movie is completely pointless. <laughs> but whatever, so Seagal frees his partner. Should've just taken the plane in jail. It's kinda not my style to leave people behind. He then immediately leaves him behind. I'm sorry, buddy, but I didn't make it. Oh well, Seagal's in the invisible plane and the traitor goes after him in an F-16. If you're wondering why, who he knows, it makes zero sense and the movie never explains it. It's an intense cat and mouse game. Try to luck out of this. Until Seagal does the insane move of just pushing the invisibility button and easily wins. And if you're wondering what happened to him, don't worry, the military ended up sending more planes and blew him the fuck up. 